public law in this case during the normal times of the law that we know and, and during the emergency there is something completely uh, uh, different. Um, so I'd like to begin with a short presentation uh, of the paper and then uh, touch on a few um, uh, emergency focused uh, issues that either uh, discussed uh, um, in, in the article, although not, not uh, specifically as points uh, regarding emergencies, uh, or that, that are uh, closely connected to the uh, article. Um, so in, in the most general terms, um, the article explores um, uh, the concept of reasonableness, which is a uh, fundamental and old well-established concept in, in administrative law uh, in common law countries, by the way. Um, the article does not uh, um, include or contain all countries in the world, not even all democracies, but common law jurisdictions. Um, and my main effort is to explicate its, the, the true nature of reasonableness of this concept um, and how it can and should be uh, applied coherently uh, and consistently as part of the rule of law. Um, the, the centrality of reasonableness in, uh, in English is really, and other common law jurisdictions, uh, uh, public law, um, does not mean that um, the literature is uh, sufficient and elaborate. Uh, in fact, uh, it's, uh, it's, surprisingly, it's surprisingly lacking um, uh, theoretical and doctrinal discussion about the essence of, of, the, of the concept. Um, one I mean, first point in this, uh, in this uh, absence of, of discussion or lack of discussion um, is legality, the relationships between reasonableness and the law. Um, it may, um, it may well, one may think that it, it should be obvious that uh, reasonableness is part of administrative law, which is part of the law, uh, but actually, uh, even though even though it's um, it's, a, it's it's a main concept of, of, of the British uh, common law for more than uh, four hundred and twenty years now, um, anyone who reads the, the cases can can uh, uh, find a clear answer whether or not reasonableness is a legal concept. The legal standard that applied by the court. <coughs> what is it that, 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 uh, that the court do when they uh, strike an administrative act down due to unreasonableness? Are they simply uh, do they simply apply the law, or do they do something else, something uh, outside the law? Um, one of the reasons for this uh, ambiguity is a phenomenon that I call. Uh, institutional obsession. The, um, the court um, in the judgment, in the reasons and explanations they give uh, to the decision in, in, in this uh, context usually focus on the court, on the tribunals, uh, and the authorities uh, that gave the decision rather than on the norm itself, uh, legal doctrine, and the law in general. Um, in the field of reasonableness, uh, we can uh, usually see um, um, reasons that um, revolve around uh, terms like restraint, judicial restraint, deference, cautiousness. The, the court or judges have to be very cautious before they uh, declare an, an, an act of uh, an administrative act uh, unreasonable, uh, therefore um, not valid, and uh, and even uh, things like reluctance. Uh, the court would be reluctant to intervene, as if the court has uh, its own uh, will and whims and caprice, and uh, one day it wants to intervene and the other it doesn't want to intervene. It's like uh, in the passive tense. 
<laughs> and the statin phenomenon is uh, the extremity of deviation. Um, before the court uh, uh, is willing to uh, set aside an administrative act due to unreasonableness, um, it, it, it require uh, in Israel uh, so extreme deviation from the range of reasonableness. So it has to be extreme deviation. Um, some uh, the main uh, uh, formulae in Britain would be an act which is so absurd that no uh, sensible person could ever dream that it lays within the power of the authority or so unreasonableness that no reasonable authority could ever come to it, or that it has consequences that are so absurd that the decision maker must, must have taken leave of his senses. And um, although in practice uh, um, the standard or the, this uh, bar was some, somewhat lo lowered uh, and the application was softened, especially since the 80s, both in, in, in the UK and Israel, where the uh, um, standard has changed, it, it is much more sophisticated today, with variable intensity of judicial review, uh, but still the, the, the phenomenon of, of, of uh, extremity is very present, and the, both in, in the UK and Israel and other jurisdictions, um, the, the Israeli Supreme Court that some, uh, some uh, uh, consider activists um, still insist nowadays on extreme deviation from the range of, of reasonableness uh, before it would consider to intervene, intervene another, another institutional um, vein. Uh, the, the court doesn't apply the law it, or discuss uh, the, the legality, the lawfulness uh, of the act, but whether or not to intervene, like, um, and um, both uh, uh, these these phenomena are, are uh, both uh, uh, distancing tactics. Um, uh, the the court uh, try to distance itself uh, from uh, contentious decisions, from decisions that uh, might be. Uh, seen as uh, political or, or um, in, in, in public uh, dispute. Um, and I, I argue that the, the, these tactics are both uh, problematic and futile. They're futile and, and unhelpful because um, um, it doesn't say what reasonableness is. Um, it even exacerbates the problem since uh, uh, the, the court doesn't uh, only evade um, the question, the general question uh, of what reasonableness is, but uh, the parties and, and anyone who reads the, the judgment, uh, commentators, academics, um, can't even know uh, if, the, if, if the specific act um, um, in, in a, a tissue was uh, was reasonable. All they th was reasonable. All they can um, decipher, perhaps, is that a restrained court that was reluctant to intervene and deferred to primary decision maker uh, couldn't find or didn't want to find an extreme and outrageous um, deviation from the standard. Uh, but but it doesn't say anything if, if the act was reasonable was reasonable or unreasonable. Um, it is problematic for, for several reasons, uh, I'm not going to elaborate on them, but just to mention them, uh, the court failed to, uh, to give reasons, to give adequate reasons for it, uh, it, it is, uh, its duty to, uh, at least to the parties and uh, to the public. Um, uh, different, uh, amounts or may amount to abdication of judicial responsibility to apply the law, to uphold the rule of law. Um, and in addition, uh, deference, uh, which is the most popular term, but, but other terms as well, um, require just justification. 
um, and we, we don't know whether uh, uh, the court should always defer to the government even on uh, or in, in, in uh, on procedural uh, grounds for judicial review um, or, or is it something special to unique to reasonable uh, reasonableness that uh, require deference um, and anyway it should be justified and and um, and it, this all the, the institutional uh, obsession and, and the extremity could have been justified uh, in theoretical terms uh, in, in language of, of principles and, and um, um, uh, political morality or, or legal philosophy but uh, in reality they, they've become um, catchphrases or mantra that, that the court uses uh, in order uh, to evade uh, the problem, um, and, uh, and and this is uh, uh, one one um, thing that I criticize in, in my article. Um, now, what I um, um, suggest is that reasonable uh, reasonableness is indeed. Uh, legal in nature is, is, is a, um, a requirement of uh, legal uh, nature. Uh, it's not uh, simply legal, it, it's an interpretative standard. Um, uh, it uh, requires to accord uh, every relevant consideration um, due importance, which is dictated by principles embedded in the common, in the common law. Um, and uh, metaphorically, it's known as due weight to each uh, uh, relevant uh, <coughs> consideration. As what? Due weight. Due right. weight. Weight. Due weight. Okay. To weigh yeah. uh, okay. consideration and give weight. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and um, it may not sound uh, like a big deal, a, a new idea, or very innovative to an Israeli student. But in England, in England, it's a big deal. Uh, the court uh, refused to or refrained from considering uh, that they are weighing uh, considerations uh, till 2014, till, till uh, four years ago. And even then, they cite uh, Professor Paul Craig, and not uh, and, and 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 doesn't say, say it clearly and and. Um, Vigorously. Um, I also explained that um, reasonableness is one link, uh, the last link uh, in the chain of, law, of lawfulness uh, um, in the field of public law. Uh, it comes particularly after power, after we uh, make sure that um, the specific bodies are. Uh, um, properly authorized, usually by, by Parliament, uh, to deal with these uh, matters um, after we make sure that the proper is purpose, that, that the purpose is proper, and, um, and, and, and that um, it uh, abide by the rule of rules of relevancy, uh, which basically means that uh, the, um, um, all decisions must be founded on uh, or that mu must be founded on relevant consideration, meaning that um, the authority uh, is allowed or must take uh, all relevant consideration into account and nothing but relevant considerations uh, into account. Um, the assignation of, of importance the categorization in law and uh, differentiation and ranking of uh, different considerations uh, has been omnipresent in, 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 in the common law world. Um, many people refuse to consider they do it uh, in the context of reasonableness, but um, the categorization of rights and even um, subdivision to uh, fundamental rights and other rights and then uh, uh, private interests which are not uh, rights um, 
as opposed to, to public interest I'll, I'll come to it uh, in a moment um, is, 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 is well established uh, we can see it uh, in, the, in the field of uh, authorization for example in order to um, to impinge on rights um, the the legal authorization uh, should be uh, in the most expressed words. So um, the parliament, the uh, legislative provision uh, drafted by parliament should be should expressly allow um, the uh, in, um, interfer interference with uh, rights, um, and and the same should be. Uh, uh, underlie the idea of uh, the notion of reasonableness, um, and the the importance is um, is uh, um, determined by uh, the constitutional theory uh, that underlies the legal do doctrine both in, in Israel and, and in the UK, um, and this this uh, constitutional theory uh, is embedded. Uh, in the the common law, in the in the case law that evolved uh, evolved uh, throughout the years, and uh, I also explained that the ranking and depreciation is ne uh, are necessary for um, making decisions on moral, rational, and coherent basis, and not as whims or uh, and as opposed to, um, to the rule of men. And, and now we, we, we can uh, start uh, discussing uh, institutions. And um, according to my uh, analysis, all players uh, participate in this interpretative exercise um, of reasonableness, especially um, administrative uh, authorities, uh, meaning uh, the executive um, and the court. Uh, but the last word, uh, is reserved uh, to the court. Um, they are, according to um, every, oh, let's be cautious, uh, according to uh, overwhelming majority of uh, defensible uh, constitutional theories, um, the court is the uh, authorized interpreter uh, of the law in democracy. Uh, this is uh, uh, its, its uh, constitutional role, its constitutional function. And, um, and actually the, the whole system of, of administrative law is based or funded on the interpretative, interpretative supremacy um, of the judiciary. Um, the The binding uh, interpretation uh, of the of the law by the judiciary is actually the um, the basis, the, the justification for delegation of power to to administrative uh, bodies. Uh, on the first place, I. Uh, Uh, just uh, lost my uh, train of thought. The general idea is that uh, the legislature, usually the, the legislature, uh, uh, grants powers uh, to administrative bodies and um, um, the judiciary uh, interprets this law, this power granting uh, provisions, um, set uh, the boundaries, the legal boundaries of, of, of its activity, and police the boundaries. And um, the idea of, of, of appointing uh, um, um, foxes to, to guard uh, hen houses to let uh, administrative bodies to determine their, their own uh, 
province or, or legal uh, uh, boundaries um, actually undermine undermines the whole um, the whole justification of uh, uh, delegation of power in a democracy in a system uh, that uh, uh, observe the rule of law. Um, but uh, after uh, I present my argument, uh, a further explanation and defense uh, are needed. As one can uh, can say, well, um, you. Um, um, speak on uh, an interpretative standard um, applied by the court on standard of correctness um, after you uh, um, insist on relevance and you say that any breach uh, makes a, a decision uh, unlawful so you leave no discretion at all to administrative bodies um, in fact, uh, all we are left with is not even uh, um, the rule of law, but the rule of judges. They decide everything. So, um, in order to address um, this uh, kind of, of, of criticism, um, I, o I offer a typology of, of administrative discretion, which is based on, on a uh, um, uh, professor Roland Walkin, one of the most renowned uh, legal philosophers of the modern era uh, in the context of uh, a jurisprudential debate of what the law is. And um, I basically divide uh, um, administrative discretion into two uh, categories. Uh, discretion in the strong sense, uh, which I call real administrative discretion, and discretion in the weak sense, which I call de facto uh, discretion and um, what characterized uh, real administrative dis real uh, normative discretion um, is that the law doesn't dictate single right answer um, in fact uh, the law is indifferent to uh, a few options within the range of, of, of discretion. Uh, so if we have uh, potential decisions A, B, and C, uh, the, um, the decision maker is, is entirely free to choose uh, one of them without uh, any legal shackles. It can, it can uh, and in fact, should decide uh, on extra legal um, considerations. And uh, discretion um, in the weak sense, uh, de facto discretion, is, uh, uh, is subject to, in theory, uh, in principle, to judicial, to uh, uh, legal, to a binding uh, legal norm that dictates one correct answer. But for uh, different reasons, uh, it has in practice uh, uh, some sort of uh, leeway. Uh, it, can be, it can be because uh, the, there isn't a legal rule that can be applied uh, mechanically and a uh, decision maker can, uh, should uh, use judgment and, and, um, and his mental faculties on a, in order to uh, reach a an acceptable answer and uh, it, it, it can be uh, due to finality that uh, uh, there's no effective review or effective appeal on his uh, decision so when the uh, Supreme Court of Israel sitting at the, high, at the High Court of Justice uh, decides a case um, judges uh, do have uh, weak, dis weak uh, discretion as there is no, well, practically the, there isn't a way to appeal or repeal uh, the, the uh, decision. 
And I demonstrate that administrative bodies, as opposed to the court, uh, possess discretion of both types, um, in, or, or at least poten potentially have discretion of both types, uh, real normative discretion as well as um, uh, de facto discretion, whereas judges uh, don't ever uh, uh, exercise uh, strong discretion. Okay, and after just one word after discussing the constitutional role of the court, um, what the constitutional role of the authorities of public, bo of public bodies, uh, usually as part of the executive. Um, and their basic role, uh, basic function, is to promote the public interest uh, as opposed to uh, private interest and rights. And, um, and they do so by setting uh, policy and making uh, policy choices. Uh, and, and policy, w w we have to emphasize, is a, a collective goal of the community. And, um, and, and this, um, this is the, the, the basis or the source of real administrative discretion. Uh, they have to make decisions with regard to, um, to uh, public interests and to promote uh, certain public interests entrusted with them by the community, uh, by the community through parliament, through its representatives. So they define the public interest by representation in Parliament. Well, I mean, how are you how are you defining the, the public interest? Public uh, public advantages, the public welfare. Yeah, but which welfare? which public? <coughs> no, no, uh, the uh, citizenry at, uh, at large. But there is no citizen. Citizen, at large. right? So why there is the, no the sovereign interest. the sovereign represent the Knesset, the Parliament represent the citizenry. Independent in, yes, in of, of no. what, is right. the wheel, what is the will of the public? What? What is the will of the you public? It's many, a, many it's different a, wills. It's an interpretation matter. Okay. It's an interpretation matter. That's the issue. It's an interpretation sorry. matter. Sorry. sorry. It's an excellent sorry. question and, and mm -hmm. a debatable one. Uh, it's just something that I work with out of the law field. And I, just uh, I have some comments on which of us. I'm sorry. So I. I also discuss uh, internal limitation on real normative discretion, internal, uh, it means that they are internal to the public interest, and some external limitations. I, I, I mean, time precludes elaboration, so I, I, I'm not going to, to get into details, but um, I, I'll just mention about uh, mm -hmm. limitation on the real normative discretion, which is uh, related <laughs> to the <laughs> question. Um, that I explain that uh, although the, uh, the authorities uh, have, in many cases, uh, at least potential of real normative discretion, um, they're not allowed to uh, take any decision, uh, embrace any ideology, or um, follow uh, voters' whims. Um, they must. Uh, they must adopt a coherent conception of the common of the common good which is but but it should be um, a coherent conception and of the common good and um, uh, this conception should be uh, t theoretically tenable and explainable uh, these are the main idea it, it also be should be um, uh, consistent um, once the authority adopted certain uh, policy, certain uh, perception of the common good, it should stick to it and adhere to this conception in different cases. This is in the very basic idea of uh, administrative equality in, in, in public law. Uh, and I'm not going to get into external limitation, but limitations, but just to say that, or mention that, it's about the changing uh, circumstances and uh, different facts, uh, 
fact, uh, fact uh, sensitive. Um, there are a few main factors uh, which are not, uh, some of them intuitive. Uh, for example, if we have a, a binary decision, it, it is much less likely that, uh, um, that the authority would, would, ha would possess uh, real normative discretion because if one is forbidden, the, the, it, it must, I mean, normatively, it must take the, the other uh, option, so the other course of action. So, um, and, and if we have a multiple uh, uh, possible causes of action, um, uh, I mean, the um, potential uh, for uh, strong discussion grows uh, significantly. That's one, one of the factors. Um, so I, I now uh, uh, finish my, my the, the presentation of the article and, and say a few things about emergency. So, uh, in, in particular, first, um, why why this article is particularly important for emergency? Uh, so, um, as I started to uh, explain. Uh, according to, the, to, to my uh, argument, um, reasonableness is just one, the last of one uh, uh, link in the chain of lawfulness. Um, what typically happens in, in uh, emergencies, uh, especially emergencies of large uh, scale, that other links uh, of the uh, uh, chain of lawfulness become significantly weaker. Um, most notably, the link of power, of uh, the law of due authorization. Um, and it's not uh, necessarily uh, the law that become uh, weaker or less uh, adequate to deal with emergency, emergencies, but uh, the situation. Um, in, during emergencies, uh, governments uh, tend to concentrate powers, and parliaments tend to give them all the power they request. So, um, and and usually they do it, or partially they do it, because the public demands them to give uh, the government uh, any any power. It, it, Think that, that or claims that, that it uh, require in order to face um, the crisis, and um, it can be uh, the, uh, the authority uh, can be uh, conferred on the on on, on um, the body um, through regular uh, legislation or temporary legislation with sunset clauses, but for the ta for for the uh, for this juncture uh, in time, in, in, in time uh, it doesn't really matter because they, they do have the authority. And in Israel and many other jurisdictions, um, we even uh, have uh, emergency regulations uh, during, uh, during um, uh, crisis, during uh, emergency uh, situations. And, and what it means that uh, the fox here uh, guard, guards the hen house because um, the, the cabinet authorizes itself uh, to do all sorts of things. And um, th there are limitations in the Israeli constitution uh, or constitutional uh, provision, um, uh, emergency uh, regulations, uh, have to be strictly necessary to face the emergency or to deal with the crisis and um, uh, the, 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 uh, it, it, it's impossible to uh, convene the Knesset uh, to, to uh, legislate but and, and only for, uh, for maximum of, of, of three months um, but still they, they can uh, give themselves the authority to, to do all sorts of of things, including um, interfering with uh, fundamental rights, and um, 
And so the interpretation, the limitation of discretion and interpretation according to um, general principles embedded in the common law and not uh, um, legislation or more dependent but, uh, but uh, derived from theory, from uh, morality, from reason, uh, it, all, all of them is uh, it, it's debatable to which one uh, which one is the, the uh, basis but 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 to any of these um, help us to to maintain the rule of law during uh, emergency and and, and um, I think plays uh, play pivotal role in in, uh, in uh, the, this preservation of the rule of law now. Uh, phenomenon that that, that are um, that are, um, are common to uh, to both reasonableness and and emergency. So I um, I talked about legality and the relationship between between reasonableness and the law, and um, it comes even more much more uh, expressly much more blatant and, and prominent uh, with regard to emergency and the law um, because uh, in, in, uh, in the literature on emergency um, some well, uh, eminent scholars um, openly claim that uh, during uh, emergencies, government should be allowed to act extra-legally, illegally, outside the law, um, which is not, um, no, one, no one makes uh, uh, such a, a, an, an open uh, claim uh, with regard to reasonableness. It's just, over there, it's just a, a something that we, we uh, see in, in uh, in cases, but no one justify that and and and, uh, and argue for that. Um, now, um, and and uh, there's a, a the whole model of extra legality uh, advanced by, by a few uh, a few scholars, a few academics, uh, not 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 by the courts uh, so far. Um, that, uh, that that really. Um, justify uh, extra legal um, a model of extra legality um, I would like to state in one uh, uh, to give the title of, of my answer to that and um, my my answer is that the purpose of public law is the regulation of public bodies uh, um, in any time in any situation uh, even 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 more in emergency when when, when, when the rule of law uh, is in danger um, and the answer to need uh, for flexibility for adaptation um, lie in the norms themselves uh, especially norms uh, of the kind of uh, um, principle that are based on weight um, are flexible enough uh, and, and the uh, normative system as a whole is uh, rich enough um, to answer uh, any, any uh, question or any uh, special uh, arguably unexpected or unforeseen uh, needs and, and, and uh, development during uh, emergency. I'll be happy to, to discuss it later if you, if you have questions. Um, institutional obsession, again, no less than reasonableness. Um, I forgot to put my slides on. <laughs> Just to put it on the back corners. What's that? Institutional obsession. Um, 
the focus on the literature um, is on the courts. Uh, entire models are based on strict enforcement, on curial deference during emergency. Everything is, is from the literature on emergencies. Um, relaxed judicial review. Again, I can almost feel the tranquility when I uh, read the, uh, the articles. Um, and even uh, non-justiciability, which has almost disappeared from the legal literature uh, very much so in the last decade, uh, are all openly advocated for uh, in the context of, of emergencies. Uh, that certain matters are uh, non-justiciable. Um, and sometimes the emergency-centered uh, analysis of, of, of a few scholars, uh, most notably Gross, um, see norms uh, as servants or tools of the court. So, for example, uh, norms that contain or based on uh, balancing, such as reasonableness, um, um, seen as, he said, a recalibration tools and uh, for recalibration tools of the court, um, instead of, of understanding the norm and, and, and uh, what it means. Um, and here again, my, my view is that one shouldn't conflate um, legality with enforcement or application by, uh, by certain institutions. And we usually uh, um, associate uh, um, enforcement with the court, whereas uh, um, primary decision makers uh, are equally uh, um, bound to, to abide by the law, uh, not to say uh, the legal advisors that, that uh, should make sure that they uh, obey or observe the law. And uh, one last point is about uh, defensive adjudication. Um, my view is that the courts are neither uh, an end of itself uh, nor jewels or, or, or something like that that, that, that need, need to be uh, protected from harm or from uh, contamination. The, the, the whole notion that uh, um, to separate uh, the law in normal times from the non-law uh, or the void, the legal void uh, in, uh, in extreme condition, uh, under, in, in emergencies under extreme conditions, is that uh, we don't want to contaminate uh, the law or the court. Um, and uh, in my view, social and political institutions um, are expected to perform a function, and in the case of the court, they are expected to apply the law. Um, um, also, and, and especially in emergencies, they're not. Uh, I I I wouldn't like to um, think of the court of judges as uh, preoccupying themselves with uh, self-preservation, uh, institutional interest, uh, promotion of the interest or something like that, they, they, they should uh, fulfill the, uh, the function and, and uphold the rule of law. So the concept of reasonableness remains the same in administrative law in general and in emergency situations right. specifically. And and the, the circumstances uh, um, change, and, and, and so does the, the, the balance between different considerations. So if we have, if we have uh, um, defense of the realm from on, on one side and, and, and uh, free speech on the other, um, the balance would be different during uh, war and, and peace time, but, but the norm remains the same. The, the, the context, context changes. About the context, context changes. changes. The, the context and the weight or the importance of, of, of well, each one of the relevant considerations. The weighing changes. Right. The weighing. the weighing of the considerations changes because of the change in the context. Exactly. Yeah. Of course. This is the, the, yeah. Yeah. the flexibility that you were talking about. That it's flexible enough that the balance will make. Right. In the context of reasonableness, yeah. that's the flexibility.
in other in other contexts, but again, the, um, one of the of the attacks of um, of the model, which which was not, I think, have never been modeled properly, but is called uh, prejudicially by growth um, business as usual, uh, with some elements of what he calls uh, accommodation. That there are two that that are. Not, not easily um, distinguished one from another, um, but uh, they attack what they call the assumption or presumption of perfection, that the legal system is, uh, is perfect, so it, it's capable of, of uh, containing everything. And I would say that it would be uh, exaggerated and not uh, prudent to declare um, the legal system, uh, like in general or specific legal systems, as perfect, um, but common law jurisdiction, at the very least, are uh, rich. The, the normative system is rich enough to contain emergency. Okay. I will Go ahead. Begin. You make it. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for the article. I read it uh, completely. <laughs> thank, thank you. Really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was, I think, uh, published on the 12th. Am I right? Or on the 12th? It, w it was sent to you. Yeah. As, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I missed in the uh, article is a very uh, clear hierarchy, i.e., instead of speaking of the process and the consideration and the different way and the change of context, the hierarchy by which the Supreme Court of Israel declared that these public uh, uh, entities are entrusted as a public trustee. Right. Public trustee. Administrative body. Yeah. The yeah. Official. Administrative body. In other words, from that point, you can uh, call it a constitutional, uh, you know, uh, thinking. Everything is becoming more clear because. What the hierarchy is that they are entrusted as a public uh, trustee. Then we are coming to actually what we call a decision-making process, within which reasonableness is one of the main consideration or may uh, or let's say a requirement, and uh, and of course proportionality is one of them. And proportionality should, for instance, change if you change the context between regular situation and emergency. Proportionality is a very, very uh, um, uh, clear uh, idea and very important idea. Um, so the hierarchy, I, I miss the hierarchy, the, the uh, explicit hierarchy. It's implicitly from the article you can, you know, you can... Uh, 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 understand it, but explicitly it's not in the, uh, in the article. By saying hierarchy? Hierarchy, I mean, first of all, the constitutional idea, theory, um, uh, whatever, and the trust, and, and the, the, uh, the public entrust, uh, uh, trustee, all of these administration utilities are public trustee. When you say public trustee, then you have the interaction between the public and the and, and the entity by the same uh, uh, token, and this helps me to understand why they have to conduct them to conduct the the, the decision making accordingly. And of course, then you can you know specify various you can specify relevance, you can specify purpose, proportionality. Uh, fairness, etc., etc. Well, fairness—it's uh, yeah, 
it's not, furnace. It's not a specific uh, requirement. It's, uh, if, if, uh, no, but you know, overarching. if I'm entrusting you something, I, by so doing, I expect that you will treat me fairly, in a fair way, in a fair way. Am I yeah. right? Okay. Now that that hierarchy makes the whole picture more uh, clear, from my point of view, in understanding reasonableness in the context of what I'm saying now. Yeah. Because if we are starting from uh, reasonableness uh, as an interpretative, uh, you know, idea. It doesn't make it, it's not so clear why we should speak about it, what is the importance of it, etc. etc. Uh, a second thing that I've missed in the article is the idea of dual entities, dual entities that are not part and parcel of the uh, let's say public sphere. For instance, uh, government hybrid. You mean hybrid? Uh, hybrid. Yes. Uh, uh, Semi-private and semi. A, a, a government company that is a business entity, and at the same time <coughs> should conduct its um, its business and consideration like uh, administrative uh, administrative uh, entity. Um, that was not in the article. Uh, the question is if reasonableness. Uh, my idea is that they have to conduct uh, the same way, the same way, even though they are not, you know, a ministry or a statutory uh, entity, they have to conduct uh, the same way. Uh, and the uh, last comment is that, <coughs> sorry for the hoarseness. The last uh, comment is that uh, still, Reasonableness, reasonableness is something that is interpretive, subjective, and I've not seen in the article if there were incidents by which the Supreme Court, for instance, in a, a narrow, uh, Sorry for the surprise. Okay, I can't do that. Uh, 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 what I want to say is that if in if there was a, a situation by which the Supreme Court dealing with a, a case study, a case, and then change its uh, uh, its opinion when they have uh, you know enlarged the uh, the uh, yeah. This is the question because it's so it's so subjective, it's so uh, uh, interpretative that this can be happen that this can 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 happen. Mm -hmm. More judges okay. thought something else is reasonable than less judges. Is this what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. or yeah. vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if if there is such a case, I don't know. I don't know the literature. Well, first the, the, if the there is not even any majority. In, in no, 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 but, but the but forum is the forum. The other you know, so the small or large. Video. 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 There were, I, I, I know. There were a few cases, like Vixelbaum, you can, you can uh, search for it. Uh, I'm not sure of the minority majority. Uh, uh, no, but not minority majority. The number of people. Yes. Yeah. The change so of forum. The, 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 yeah, but if the you size have, of the forum. Yeah, but if you have five judges that think it's reasonable and three think it's not reasonable, yeah, but no, still, but two to one is different than. Right, so it's an additional uh, audit ID on the So, Vixelbaum is one, is one example. Um, minority and majority in, uh, in three judges. Um, The yeah, panel, yeah. and then uh, and then an extended panel, but uh, and did it change the? I'm no, I I I don't remember if, if the uh, that's what I was saying. If the minority majority ratio was was changed, and, and I'm hinting. I, I, my, I'm hinting not only for the this technical uh, question. I'm hinting to the fact that you know we are trying to separate right ideology or political ideology from you know mm -hmm. from from uh, discretion, oh, from morality, discretion. Yeah. right right and we know and we know it's obvious 
that uh, in the United States, also uh, in Israel, the uh, Minister of Justice has its ideology by nominating certain, you know, judges. And or the if, president. And yes, and if you change the panel, then the, the, the interpretation of reasonableness yes, changes. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. And this this uh, 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 gives you a clear picture how vague or morphic this reasonableness is, uh, you know. Right. So le le uh, let me right. try to address each one of the, of the points. Uh, trust. So um, you're absolutely right. It's, it's an important uh, um, concept uh, uh, in, uh, in public law. Uh, it's not the only way to justify um, um, the standard of public law. Uh, other ways are uh, equal citizenship and liberty and, and different uh, point of view. Um, so it, it's a fundamental concept in, in public law. I don't dispute that. It's just that it wasn't this article. Like here, I wanted to give the normative contour of, of reasonableness and, 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 and describe or discuss its nature, its essence, and not um, many other um, um, theoretical questions uh, in, in the discipline. Um, with regard, uh, well, the same uh, answer applies with, uh, to hybrid uh, um, bodies. I tend to agree with you that reasonableness should be applied uh, similarly in most cases. Um, I, gave, I gave you a hint uh, in the article when I said something like um, uh, administrative bodies, even if they are not part of the, um, uh, I don't know, a traditional um, edifice of, I don't remember the, the phrasing, but, yeah. but I, I gave you a hint that I, I agree with you. Um, and the last question about uh, disputes. The thing is that um, different opinions, even of eminent judges, or uh, differences of opinions between uh, two reasonable uh, people, uh, doesn't say much about um, the um, correct answer. I mean, one of them or both of them can be wrong. And we here um, conflate uh, epistemological questions with normative questions. So it is possible that we, that the, the answer is hard to, 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 to find out. And, and um, uh, at a specific point, we even don't know the answer and we, we have to, um, to uh, how do you say uh, estimation? To, well, yeah, to, to, to try to be as close as we can to the to the correct question. I, I, and I think there is no correct answer. Yeah, that's so the problem. I yeah, mean, you're, you're, no one of your hypotheses is, and this right. is really with no legal background. Right. So uh, you know, I I apologize, and I'm Being sure you can. Five years or yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but we are anyway. But yeah. but your assumption is that reasonableness is normative, and I find that hard to to accept. I mean, I because it's how it, it's all in the framing and some of the some of the work that we've done. I mean, I, the the argument that reasonableness is a normative concept is something that I have to be convinced about because I right. don't think there's a right answer. I want answer. to convince her. May I? <laughs> but uh, there's no yeah. right answer. No, <laughs> this is I'm not, And this I'm is not, not post no, 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 I want to, no, no, no. I, I, we have to differentiate between the right answer and, and uh, reasonableness as a norm, as a norm. What I mean is that by saying that reasonableness is a norm, we actually delimit the, uh, the, 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 the play. What I mean is, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, uh, sure that I have a, the, 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 the correct or right answer, but I should be, uh, depict 
what I should do as a reasonable person. What but I mean is, what I, okay, uh, and that's what I'm saying. But you have to, you have to, mm -hmm. you have to depict uh, the consideration. They should be clear. You have to rank them. You have to put them in the right context. All these, all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing is something that emanate from the fact that reasonableness is a norm. I'm not saying that by so doing I will uh, reach or get to the right answer, but it compels me to do something, to put the consideration, to weigh the consideration, to rank them, to see if I'm, I have the authority to do it, that's in the first place, etc., etc. Et what as I mean is, as a process, as a process, as a process, and the norm, and the norm dictate, dictate actually but we're talking a process. About the outcome, yes. But no, when, no, the when outcome it becomes the outcome, then I have a problem with the it. The outcome, the outcome is not a norm. The outcome is not a norm. The reasonableness is a norm. The the context, the 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 the. the but the, Nadav the also takes about. Well, you should tell me whether you do, but. Nadav doesn't only talk about reasonableness as a process. He, in the article, I think, also talks about reasonableness as an outcome. So as a process, I'm with you. As an outcome, I'm questioning. And how do you... Right. Um, so first, you're right. I, I refer to the... Well, outcome is... is, is, is uh, well, ambiguous, but uh, certainly to the substance of the decision, right. the content the process, of the decision. Exactly. Okay. Um, well, there's there's a huge uh, debate, um, a philosophical and and legal in legal philosophy, whether or not there is a correct answer. Uh, and I well, it's not. I, I I'm not doing uh, like philosophy, pure philosophy here. Right. Um, I align myself with those who think that there is, uh, in theory, in principle, uh, one correct answer in, within certain uh, normative system, right? It's, it's, a, it's a w one correct legal answer, okay? Mm -hmm. You can agree or disagree with that. Uh, we're not going to, um, right. to end this, this, this discussion uh, now, here and now. Um, so my assumption is indeed that there is one correct uh, answer, uh, although we, we, we don't necessarily uh, know it. Um, so um, what well, is that, um, I mean... The court well, has eventually know. to come up with a decision. Right, and, and, and in, law, in, in anyway. law in particular, especially in common law countries, even um, even if the the, um, the answer uh, theoretically, if we uh, engage in pure exercise of uh, um, uh, philosophy of political morality, is contentious. Once uh, the Supreme Court uh, ruled on the uh, matter, uh, it should be now uh, uh, the, the, the correct answer, unless I mean it's not the correct well, answer. The, the correct conduct. The the correct no, 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 it's not the correct answer. answer it becomes legal. Okay, legal legal sense. No, and, and, okay. and I agree with you yeah. that um, court, uh, court uh, may err, and then, uh, and, and because I, I think that there is uh, normatively and not institutionally one correct answer, this is why you can say that courts may err. Otherwise, uh, if you're a uh, positivist, Courts can't. Yeah, they, they, they always they, they can be mistaken because the, the the mere fact that they decided the way they did uh, make it right. Okay, and I, and I don't believe it. Um, but I I, 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 I I disagree that there is a one correct answer. Maybe when we are dealing with basic human rights, that but you, with rights that are you know s such so why, a, such a consensus. That you cannot, you know, infringe them. But in other in other considerations where you have, for instance, competing considerations, by saying that the consideration dependent on the context, the context is changing, is right. changing, it, it changes. Right. By saying that you have to put the consideration and to rank them, I will rank them differently than you will rank them. 
I will weigh them differently than you will weigh them, depending on the context. So correct. how can we say that there is a correct answer? It depends on the on the uh, uh, on the offices that are you know taking the decision. So I'll tell so you. So there is no one correct answer. I'll tell you what one. I'm saying. Just 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 a second. What I'm saying is that the norm dictates a very um, clear way of how to consider the issues that are put that we have to deal with and not you know just but let, uh, right so once again my uh, my answer my short answer would be that it's a philosophical uh, um, a debate that we're not yes. going to decide here but if we um, I, I think that it is important to know that uh, your um, argument is not limited to reasonableness um, take process as you, you think uh, is very you, you can there you, you're on a safe ground you, you can do it uh, objectively uh, procedure uh, what if a fair hearing when the court decide that uh, uh, in order to provide or to fulfill the duty of, of, of uh, to meet the, uh, the duty of fair hearing um, the government should do X Y Z well then uh, they, they don't weigh uh, competing considerations the court? Of course they do. The court? The primary decision maker and the court. But the court can say that the, the, uh, the weighing was, was, was wrong, for instance. The weighing of the, of the government was wrong. The ranking was wrong. No, the, no. The, with, why, once they weighed but it, then the process was okay. And then the outcome no, was no, wrong. I'm not talking about the process that is okay. The, the uh, Supreme Court can say that the, the ranking or the weighing is not should be a different uh, way. It's sure. a, it's a, for you know, at the beginning of the article, it was very interesting to, to see a tautology approach, saying that reasonableness is something that um, so th that that uh, uh, cannot be made. It should be made by. I don't remember the the phrase how it was, because it's so vague. It's so uh, uh, amorphic. And it's so dependent on the context and on the approach that you take and uh, the ideology that you bring to the table. We cannot, you know, deny it. Mm -hmm. So to say that, you know, in the process there is a, a, a right answer right or correct answer, I don't legally. think so. Le no, legally there is. If the Supreme Court will say this is the correct answer, this is the no, correct not answer. In, not, not legally in the institutional sense, but legally in the normative sense. In I, I claim that there is a right answer in the normative sense. That, 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 that political morality, which is part of the law, as translated to law, uh, does give you uh, one correct answer, in theory. So, uh, I, I, but it's not my, uh, again, it's not my argument. Uh, Dworkin's argument and, and Allen argument and, uh, and uh, many political, uh, many uh, legal philosophers. So, well, we, we can I, I, again, if you if if you disagree with that uh, contention, then all we can do is to uh, fall back to the institutional uh, um, institutional argument that uh, once uh, the common law is is so and so because the, the court uh, uh, has, has decided throughout the years that uh, this is our system then you have one legal correct answer but, uh, but this is not my argument okay. uh, but again to let's go to fair hearing um, if um, uh, there's a legal dispute whether or not uh, the government uh, should hear um, every uh, one that is that, that that is going to be harmed by its decision. Um, so here and, and during uh, the, the it may uh, come. I mean, the the, the the problem may arise uh, during emergencies. Um, we don't have the manpower. We don't have the time to now to conduct. Uh, I don't know one thousand hearings. We, we can't do it. And and the court say no. You must. So here, uh, no, it's not reasonable. No, it's not reasonable. Or, or otherwise, it's not reasonable. no. Okay, ne never. No, it, it doesn't matter. The, um, I mean, 
the, 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 the content of, of, of the decision, of the final decision is not the issue here. Yeah. But the issue here is that, uh, again, you, you can say, well, th there isn't right answer, they should or shouldn't do it. So you, you can say it about any legal requirement. If your argument is that there is not, there isn't a correct answer, it's not, it's not an argument that is limited to reasonableness. It's about legal requirements in general. Does and and what and does I don't the jury system do to some to a question like this? I mean, Sorry? I know it's not come on, but what what how what about the difference between a jury system and a tribunal? Does the does the idea of reasonableness? Tribunal, you, you but you no, mean, I mean professional uh, judges. Yeah, professional judges versus mm -hmm. a jury system. D does the I mean it's out of your context, right? But so to the best of my knowledge, uh, well, juries uh, deal deal with facts, not with uh, with normative questions. Uh, at least they should <laughs> deal delimit themselves to <laughs> to facts. They don't always do it, but but this is their role. Um, right. In right. So they can't have a reasonable doubt. But in okay. in Britain, at least, uh, questions of reasonableness and public law in general uh, are not, um, and juries are not involved in these uh, yeah. proceedings. Right. Right. Yeah. I know, it I goes know. to the high court. Outside and your and yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you all. Thank you. And when is our next uh, two weeks? I think two weeks from now.